the Kirka story, 23 years full of mischief and trouble. I've been a beggar and I've been a king. I've been a loner and I've won the ring. Losing my There's still a very wild sense about Alaska. You go out, you go fishing, you know, look over your shoulder. You're gonna be watched by something. There's the majesty, it is just vast, unbelievably beautiful landscape. And that's why I love my home. I grew up in a little town in Homer, Alaska called Nikolaivis. It was a little Russian village. I spoke Russian and I spoke English. Uh, I ended up moving away, having the, uh, the classic single mother uh, with two boys. We're masters at monkeying around. <laughs> These boys are super close and they have each other's back. It's really good. He seemed to love the vacuum. It made noise and he could sit on it and he got a ride. We grew up on a farm, you know, lots of animals to take care of, lots of hard work, and I feel like that's what started me off in sport. I've always loved fishing. There's nothing like the salt water dropping down a fish, not knowing what you're going to catch. It's just the piece of finding your soul out in the middle of nowhere. When he started wrestling, he started with a fellow by the name of Steve Wolf, who was just a wonderful coach. They, they can make the biggest difference in children's lives. He helped me to see the, the integrity behind sport and the difference that it makes for people. When you are out there on the mat, it is pretty much 100% you versus 100% another person. You always need to be a little bit better and that helped me. It helped to change my perspective. It helped to change the way that I, I live my life. I became a five-time state champion, Greco-Roman and freestyle, went to nationals. I got back after nationals. First thing I wanted to do, I wanted to go fishing. On my way out there, I uh, flipped a four-wheeler and uh, broke my back. It rolled off of me and I stood up. And as soon as I stood up, my spine went backwards and I fell straight down to the ground. And uh, I was paralyzed instantly. And for a 13-year-old, that, uh, that was pretty traumatic. I was very scared. I mean, the classic story, you know, I, you're not gonna walk again. If you do, then it's a miracle. There was a lot of white man. <laughs> oh man, there were a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of whiny moments. Yeah. <laughs> it just moved forward. All the pain just helped me to want to help a lot of other people. You know, if you live a life for yourself, you live a selfish life, you live a useless life. When you've been fighting for it all. It took me a little while and a lot of broken bones to finally realize that sometimes skiing as fast as I can 100% of the time wasn't the fastest way down the course. I want to be able to finish courses completely in control and completely fast. Being part of the Paralympic ski team is, uh, is great. We're all there to help each other. We're all there to uh, represent our country the best that we can. It's, uh, it's a dream of wanting to live for a lot of my life. That competitiveness, always wanting to be the best, that's what drives him. When he sets his mind on something, he, he takes it. There's nothing that'll stop him. I like to move it, move it. I, I couldn't think of a song really at the time, but I had just watched Madagascar, and so I was like, I like to move it, move it. You know, what the heck? My favorite was, uh, was when I'd come up like this, and then it'd be like, I like to move it, move it. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is Andrew Kirk. I'm happy to be here. Happy to tell you a little bit about my life. He, he had a wonderful way of speaking, you know, and he still does. <laughs> Radio DJing was just a natural thing that came to me. It gave me a chance to be an announcer at X Games. I did have my own show. I did a, a noon request hour, and then I had a late night show. I played some good stuff. Feel the love. Oh, oof. Old ladies were calling me, like, a lot. <laughs> In a world filled with tyranny and destruction, adaptive spirit lets athletes live their dream. 
An event like Adaptive Spirit is a fantastic event where people can get together for a single cause to help others. It restores a bit of, you know, your faith in humanity. Netcracker uh, decided as a whole that they wanted to be there for me. No matter how tight the funds get, no matter how hard every year gets, um, I'm able to squeeze through, I'm able to make it because of that. I plan on ski racing till I'm 30. Hopefully being a dual sport athlete. I plan on uh, hopefully ending my career with a boat. I want to be able to take uh, handicapped people so they can feel the joy of catching a fish bigger than they are. We had a discussion in the hospital when he first broke his back. I said, all this does is change your journey just a little bit. She said, it happened to you because you can handle it. You know, it, it helped me to realize that what's happened to me, I need to make a purpose, I need to make a reason for what happened to me, and that's why I've always wanted to help people. Great father figure, great brother, probably the best hero too. I've always wanted to be there, make sure he doesn't go down the wrong road. It's definitely gotten in the way of my career, but it's more important to me than my career will ever be. I keep hearing these, oh, I saw Andrew, on, and he's doing this, and he's just wonderful. <laughs> my grandma, she's the biggest heart out of anyone I've ever met. The influences they've had on me are, are I mean, super big deals. I mean, my mother, she taught me hard work as I was growing up. My mom works harder than most men you'll meet. <laughs> A very, very strong woman. My grandma is the kindest individual you'll ever meet. My little brother's the smartest little bastard on this planet. <laughs> so they've definitely all pushed me in each of those different ways. I want to help him get to his goals, and he has the same feeling about me. He's always out to help somebody. His uh, attitude has been great that way. He said, I'm gonna go to the Olympics. And I said, in what? He said, wrestling. He didn't end up there the way he thought he was gonna end up there, but he's there. You'll never feel more alive, you'll never feel more natural when you, when you find a, a sense of instinct that, that drives you through this world. A lot of people, they're afraid of, they're afraid of dying, they're afraid of what might happen. I'm afraid of what won't happen. It's, there's a little piece in me that, that pushes me to want to be the best that I can be at every single thing. Uh, when I think that thought and I go and I do it, my days turn out better. My heart turns out happier and that's what I look for in life.